Hi everyone, it's Fjustra. This week, Apple announced the brand new 2021 iPad Pro with, surprisingly, the M1 chip. And it's just fantastic that they added the M1 chip to their iPad Pro. It's a very powerful chip, we already know it from the MacBook Air and the Mac Mini, and it just blows away the competition at the same price point. Now, there's just one thing that is holding back the iPad Pro from becoming a real super powerful device, and that is iPadOS 14. Now, don't get me wrong, I use this as my laptop replacement. I use this more than my Mac, like really much more for both work-related stuff as well as uh, my YouTube stuff, but it isn't 100% perfect. Sometimes I still need to grab my Mac just to do one thing and then go back to my iPad. Now, the number one thing that I would like to see in iPadOS 15, which will be announced in June, is proper external monitor support. I mean, the way you see it right now, without the black bars, would be great already. And then being able to move windows to that external monitor would be great. And that is something I want to show you today. This is my concept for external monitor support in iPadOS 15. Okay, now it's possible you already saw my video from last year where I showed you external monitor support, or at least a concept of it, for iPadOS 14. That was in, on June 5 that I made it, but it didn't sadly make the cut. I mean, it didn't come to iPadOS 14. Now, I really hope it'll come to iPadOS 15. So, in this video, I'll be showing you two concepts. First of all, I will show you again the way I saw it last year, because that one is the most realistic one and the easiest way to implement it without too many new menus. I know already there are a few other concepts out there that are really spectacular, really great, um, but this here is the most simple way that Apple could implement them. And the second one is something that resembles Samsung DeX a little bit. So this is what you normally get when you connect your iPad to a screen, you get these black bars and your iPad is mostly mirrored. Now, when you connect your iPad with a dongle, you always get this blue thing. And for me, I think it would be great if this was a button. So let me just tap over here. And instead of mirror screen, you can choose extend screen. And when you tap on that, then it would be great if your screen actually really shows you the background, the wallpaper you have, with maybe the dock. Now the dock is something that might not appear if ever they do something like this. So imagine no dock is possible as well. Now let's say you have pages open on your iPad and you want to work on a larger screen. It would be great if you could grab that thing over there. You probably recognize that thing from um, split screen. If you could just grab this with your mouse like this, and then you just, yeah, literally grab it and move it to the right side or to the left side, depending of course on how everything it is. So like this. All right, so now you have your iPad to do other stuff. You could open Twitter and just do some browsing or watch a movie on the right side. Well, on the left side, you can be productive and type some things like, um, hello everyone, this is a test document. Now, this concept from last year has just one problem and that is that developers would have to adapt their app. They will have to make their app flexible, so it's stretchable, as you could say, to fill up a whole 16 by nine screen coming from a three by two screen. And so that is something that would have to be added to Xcode so developers can adapt their apps. That, is, that could be something that might take a while. Now, then again, of course, you have the beta periods. Plus, even if there would be black bars, just to be able to free up this space and to do something else here would already be a big plus. All right, so that was last year's concept. Personally, I think that this is the most realistic one that Apple could add. It's not too complicated. It's um, it's not too much Mac OS-ish. It is still very iPad-y, um, but still it would create, it would give you more productivity by using a second screen. Now, what if Apple does take it a step further and does something that reminds us of Samsung DeX? Well, first of all, um, the good thing about Samsung DeX is you don't need an external monitor. You could just use your Galaxy Tab S7 and just uh, use Samsung DeX on its own. And that would really be great. I mean, if this would get window mode, like really Windows apps, app windows over here, I would definitely use it. I would love it probably. Uh, but I don't see Apple doing it. It's just too... It just gives it too, too much of a desktop experience compared to a Mac. Um, on Samsung DeX, I mean, Samsung doesn't have a desktop system. I mean, they don't have Windows, or they do have Windows PCs, but they don't have their own laptop operating system. They would just use Windows. Um, while here, Apple has Mac OS, so I don't think they'll put Mac OS experience on the iPad. Instead, I'm thinking, 
that everything here will still remain full screen. So like this, for example, this is Word, the current Word app. Really, I hope they really update this in the future, Microsoft. Anyway, this here is the current Word app. Now, what if again, you will be able to move this to that screen, to the external monitor. Now, instead of going full screen, let me just uh, do it right now. So I'll just move it to the right side. Now, what if it looked like this? What if you do get a Samsung DeX experience on an external monitor? So it's a floating window, it has rounded corners, there's a shadow over here, uh, your background is also a bit darker than the one on an iPad, and uh, yeah, that is it. You could work here, do something else on your iPad, but you still have space here for something else, maybe for a second app. So let's say Twitter, for example. Now instead of using, instead of always moving this from right to left, what if you just use your mouse, your cursor, and grab the Twitter app to put it just here? like this. So again, just a concept, so it might look very fake, uh, but here it is. So if you just take the Twitter app, put it there, and then you can, you don't need to minimize it or to swipe the whole time from left to right or lose screen estate by using split screen. No, you can just leave everything in the right uh, app size and work on both apps at the same time. Now, those windows, of course, I can just move and I would interact like normal windows, like something that you would normally do, like put them left and right and so on. Now, one more thing is iPhone apps. Certain apps on the App Store are only made for iPhone and not for iPadOS. And currently you get like a black screen with a small version of the, I mean, the iPhone version for iPad, which is very irritating because Instagram, for example, it would be cool if Instagram looked like this or preferably, of course, larger, but that it would just float on your screen instead of taking up your whole screen and you'd have to tilt your head just to be able to type something with your keyboard in, on Instagram. So that would be cool if that one would just float. Now, floating iPhone apps isn't really a new concept. The concept has already been made before, and that is just a very logical thing to do. So please, Apple, just let us do this. If Instagram won't make an, an iPad app, uh, let us at least use the iPhone app as a normal floating app on iPadOS. And the cool thing is I can just move this now, now to the left side of my screen on my external monitor. So that would be something like this. That would really be cool. And I can just use this, uh, watch a live stream on uh, on Instagram while I'm browsing Twitter and typing something in Word. That would just really be cool. So these are two ways of how Apple could add external monitor support to iPadOS 15, either in full screen mode, which is maybe the most realistic way, or in window mode, which is the coolest way and the most practical way for us users. Now, there's just still one more thing I still want to mention in iPadOS 15. Won't it be great if we could have the M1 optimized Mac apps on our iPads? It might be a bit, it might not be realistic because like some apps just totally won't work, like clean my Mac won't work on an iPad. Uh, but I'm just thinking of Word because Word and Excel and PowerPoint, the office apps for my work then, those are the only, that's the only reason why I need to still take my Mac. For all the rest, I can just use my iPad nowadays. So won't it be nice to have instead of this, which is the normal iPad app, this here, which is the, I mean, a mix between the iPad OS app, the same menus back and the options over there, uh, but also have here the ribbon from Mac OS, which just adds so much more productivity features, so much more options. It would, be, it would really be great if Microsoft could just add uh, all of the features from the desktop uh, Mac app to the iPad app. That's why I'm hoping that there'll be a kind of a kind of merge between Mac apps and iPad OS apps, not iOS in general. Just it would really be great if you could just run M1 optimized apps on the iPad Pro. Of course, preferably also on older iPads and not just the brand new M1 iPad Pro. Anyway, these were just a few things that are on my wish list for iPadOS 15. What do you think of these concepts? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.